Okay, then let's start. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to the first public uh, Prometheus developers uh, meeting. Um, today we have a couple of uh, topics um, and we'll kick off with Brian, um, who will talk to us about the bug fix moratorium. Brian, you want to take this? Yep, you can hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, great. Fancy mics helps. Uh, so since 2.0 has come out, uh, we haven't really had a good release of Prometheus, one that doesn't have some nasty bug or other. Uh, and we've been in a situation where there were what appears to be multiple bugs down in CSTB, a few other in other places. And we were in a situation where these weren't being fixed. Uh, these weren't being investigated. And when users are reporting bugs, they just report a different issue on an existing bug uh, within GitHub. So us trying to keep track of what bugs do or don't exist was close to impossible. I, I think the record was, was one issue, which we resolved in November before 2.0 even came out, that had seven different bugs reported on it, or at least seven different behaviors. And when we've got you know, 15, 20 such things in the system, it's impossible for us to figure out what's going on. Now, a few months ago, back for 2.2, we said informally that we'd just not taken any feature requests for a week because normally bugs show up inside two to three days. So we said, let's be safe, let's wait a week, get everything going, fix the bugs. That helped a bit, but it didn't get us a fully stable Prometheus yet. So then for 2.3, we basically discussed it amongst Prometheus team and said, let's, let's wait two weeks and actually fix these things. Uh, so in the end, it was about 10-ish bugs that were identified and we fixed like eight of them. Uh, and a lot of these, these vary from, hey, that's basically data corruption, uh, down to things like shutdown being unclean, which isn't a major problem in and of itself. However, it causes lots of confusion among users because they see, oh, there's this error, therefore they file a bug on the wrong, on an issue for something else and causes confusion. And in practice, you know, a group like us can handle maybe two to three simultaneous bugs that we can keep in our heads, oh, it's that issue you're reporting, would you mind going over here? And that's fine. But when we're up at 10, 15 issues in the code base, that just breaks down. It just takes too much time. So we're now in a place where it looks like 232 is good. We had one false alarm this morning. And um, in fact, the bug was 231 already fixed. So all going well and good then. Uh, probably Wednesday, we'll start taking in pull requests again. The reason why it's Wednesday rather than Thursday is Thursday, I'll be extremely busy and true to Monday. So at least Wednesday, I can take care of all the pull requests I have to merge in. Unless a bug comes up, in which case we'll fix it. And then the hope would be then sometime next week, we can get 2.4 out because, you know, it's basically been a month. And it's not nice to have users to wait overly long to get their changes in. Uh, so hopefully now then 2.3.2 will be a good release of Prometheus that people can use in the future. Does anyone have questions or comments? I don't see any questions, so maybe I will continue. Go for it. Yeah, I don't see any questions. Hey, everyone, as well. For the people that know that know that don't know me, I'm uh, I work with Red Hat as part of the Prometheus team. I work uh, mainly upstream, trying to keep uh, all the Prometheus users happy, and uh, I will talk uh, about the decision that uh, was taken about adding new service discovery mechanisms, how and why it was uh, decided this way. And uh, basically, in theory, we want to cover as many use cases, as, as, as many as, as most of the popular use cases as possible. But when it comes to service discovery, there are way too many. And usually, I'm quite keen on adding new stuff, as long as there are enough few, few basically, as, as long as there are enough uh, use cases, but with this decision, I can completely say that I'm really on board, especially after trying to troubleshoot a few of those on uh, different uh, service discovery providers. I mean, even now we have a pending bug with uh, the Kubernetes uh, provider. I have added a link in the, in the doc, which basically happens only when we have a high load of over 500 targets. And I tried to replicate it, but there is no way I could do this my, on my own laptop. 
So it has been pending for quite a while now. Um, there is a, I posted another link, which um, links to a possible solution that is upstream in, in uh, Kubernetes, but I'm not entirely sure what will hap what's happening there. And uh, uh, by the way, we are very close to getting some free credit with Google. So soon we should be able to try and replicate this one on the load uh, that we need. Um, uh, let me just have a look what else. But anyway, my point was that uh, as it may sound that it's it's good idea to have these built in, it's not fun at all to uh, troubleshoot and know all the clients for all of these different providers. And basically, as Brian mentioned, we're a small group of people, so we can't possibly handle more than what we already have. And uh, instead of what we decided that instead of adding and maintaining new um, discovery providers, we will think in a direction to enable users to add their own mechanisms without breaking Prometheus. And uh, the solution we have so far, and I also added link to this, is that uh, we added an example to the official um, example documents in the official Prometheus re uh, repository. Uh, so the example shows in code how to implement a sidecar uh, that you can use to implement your own way of getting targets and just uh, spitting out um, like a um, um, JSON file. So you, uh, you create the JSON file and then we use uh, the file service discovering Prometheus to import all of these targets. And this so far seems to be the, the safest and um, the safest way to implement it without breaking anything in Prometheus and also probably the easiest for users to implement their own service discovery mechanisms. And as I mentioned, I already added all of the links uh, for the things I'm discussing here in the document. Uh, there was another discussion that I, I personally started because I'm still not 100% convinced that file um, service discovery is the way to go. And I started some discussion in the developer's mailing list. But uh, to my surprise, it seems that, I mean, so far we haven't had too many complaints to, uh, to file service discovery and it seems that it solves, if not all, uh, most of the, the current use cases. So I think so far this is the best solution we can uh, offer for adding and maintaining your own um, service discovery provider. And all the links are in the, in the document from the meetup. And maybe this is uh, the place to ask for questions. Let's hope we have at least one. I guess it's easiest if people oh, put questions in the yes. chat. Yes. Uh, um, there's a question about how, how to get access to the document. Um, yeah, I should have uh, mentioned this in the meeting invite. You just need to be part of the um, Prometheus developer mailing list, and then you will get access to it. Um, but also, uh, the first link that I put into the invite was incorrect. Um, and I replied with uh, another link, which everyone has at least read access to. Okay, there's another one. Will the existing service discovery migrate to the new method? Uh, uh, no, there are no plans for this right now. So basically we will wait for feedback, but we haven't even discussed migrating anything yet. I mean, it's too early. We haven't had even, uh, uh, I don't think even we have any users using the new way. So we don't have any feedback whatsoever so well, far. So to be clear, this isn't a new method. It's just uh, an easier way to write a file service discovery uh, because the extra code is basically just a framework that happens to use the exact same APIs we use internally inside Prometheus. Because like, it's pretty easy to use file service discovery. What's interesting about using the same APIs is it means that if someone writes against these APIs, uh, we can then move service discoveries in and outside of Prometheus. So as it stands, there are no plans to remove any service discovery mechanisms from Prometheus. It might happen in future, but none, none are on the table. And it's also possible when we're in a better state in the future that 
future service discovery is going to be implemented to third party via this mechanism, can we move into Prometheus? But neither of those seem likely to happen anytime soon, but it means we have the capability in the future. Yeah, so basically when we're not blocking users for adding their own mechanisms and we also enable an easy uh, integration if it happens that we have enough manpower to do so. But yeah, read, read the docs, see the, see the examples and just give us feedback and post issues or just uh, give us links to methods you have implemented and we'll, I think there was an idea to add the somewhere in the official docs Maybe you can... Yeah, yeah, under the operating section, there's an integrations page, and that's where it lists all the integrations that aren't client libraries or exporters. So okay. all the file SDs go in there, all the alert manager back hook receivers. There's an other section for weird stuff like prompt procs, sorry, push procs. Um, you know, so you can just send a PR with it. We'll probably use the same rules to try and encourage people to work together on one. But yeah. uh, enter pull requests. So basically, the first problem we're solving is instead of blocking users, we're just enabling them to uh, implement their own or basically encouraging them the way that is easier for us as well. Uh, Kazi, the concern that you had about um, file discovery was a performance concern or? Um... Uh, no, the main, the main thing was that not, uh, not all environments allow access to the same file system as Prometheus. I think that was the main blocker there. Did I explain it properly? Yeah, there were some users who have very odd setups, like in Kubernetes. Uh, I've got a customer, for example, who bans any use of shared volumes on Kubernetes, uh, which is not a sane setup. And hopefully they will change their mind at some point, but there's always going to be weird setups. Uh, the more common case, because I think that was only one user, is users just don't want to run a sidecar. So a lot of it comes down to more preference rather than uh, technology. Out of curiosity, that's, they're not allowing shared volumes among containers in the same pod? Yes. Interesting, okay. Okay, anyways, uh, thanks, Fazi, for uh, the thorough explanation. Um, next up is Richie with a status update for PromCon. Yes, that is correct. Uh, now the document doesn't want to open. Anyway, um, so PromCon is going well. Uh, we released the schedule. I put the link in uh, the meeting notes, so you can just click and you can see the schedule. Uh, we have way too little space. We have a total of 220 in seats and we have 200 plus people on the waiting list, which is uh, kind of bad. So next time we will definitely have a larger venue. We will be aiming for like 300, maybe 400 people. Uh, what will be nice this time, we will have a lot larger reception area. If you have been to any of the two uh, PromCons earlier, it was always really, really tight in the reception area and food was always really, really tight. This should hopefully be a lot better. I didn't get final confirmation yet, but um, it's looking good. This year around, we were able to spend around 15K on diversity, which is awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah, and we will probably uh, spend even more on diversity next time. So um, that's also very good. And roughly 10% of our attendees are female or identifying as female. And not all of those are coming via diversity sponsorship. Uh, several of those are coming by themselves. Uh, by themselves is wrong, but you know what I mean. Uh, we didn't do any deeper stats as to other other uh, types of uh, of minorities, but that's that was the easiest and quickest one. And else, yeah, everything is very is looking good, and it will probably be. Oh, by the way, we will at least try to have a live stream. I can't promise anything because the video people uh, are not set up to do a live stream, but we'll try to basically steal a stream from them and, and put it live probably on YouTube, but no promises made. Yeah, you should um, talk to myself and Ben about that because I think both of us have experience there. Yeah, same as me, uh, but yes. Uh, there was one question about um, what do you mean by diversity? 
we well basically money which we spent on getting people to Munich, uh, paying for travel, paying for the hotel, paying for the entrance fee, which is not a lot. The entrance fee, of course. Yeah, that's what I mean with that. Okay. Um, any other questions? Is yeah, that... any questions for Frampon? Maybe we should have started with this, but uh, in case anyone's not aware, PromCon is happening on the 9th and 10th of August. So yes. in about a month. But we're sold out anyway, so <laughs> if you don't have the ticket yet, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay then, um, our next topic is um, relevant Prometheus um, talks and meetups. Um, this is kind of a section where just for future uh, meetings, people can insert talks that they're giving, meetups that they're hosting, um, their local meetups, or um, just link to slides or anything like that, uh, just so we can give you a spotlight um, for any work that you're doing Prometheus related. Um, and just one that we were aware of um, is um, happening at OSCON. Um, I believe that is this specific talk is happening tomorrow if anyone um, is attending OSCON. Wednesday. It's on Wednesday? Okay. Yes. Um, and there uh, Priyanka is talking on Prometheus, Open Tracing, and Envoy, uh, the observability movement and open source. Um, yeah, so if you're at OSCON, do check that out. Um, I believe someone is trying to add an additional one. Does whoever is writing this um, want to speak up? It was Julian. Uh, yes, I will give a workshop of Prometheus at the Open Source Monitoring Conference uh, in November. Awesome. It's it's in, uh, good. Oh. I will put the link now. Oops. Cool. Okay. Okay. If we are looking this far ahead, uh, there will also be something Prometheus uh, in the KubeCons in Seattle and Shanghai. Yeah, I think we can uh, we can mention it. Uh, that we can probably mention in each meeting that's coming up. Um, but yeah, for sure there will be something at both of those. Um, or has anyone that our PromCon submissions uh, acceptance uh, already out for Shanghai? Uh, KubeCon, I mean. Uh, no, um, no reply yet. Okay. Um, then we'll see when that happens. Okay, um, then the next thing we have on our agenda is just a... Uh, ah. We'll just put something in Cloud Native London 2018, two Prometheus talks. Tom, do you have sound, voice? Yeah, hi guys. I'm talking, uh, I'm talking about Prometheus and um, chat from Improbable is talking about Thanos. Bartek from Improbable is talking about Thanos. That's in... September, 28th of September. Then do make sure you attend that if you are in London at that time. Um, great topic. Um, okay, then the next thing on our agenda is just a general QA, Q &A session. So if there's anyone in the community or really anyone on this call who has any uh, kind of questions about Prometheus development, um, how anything works, or just want to start a discussion. This is your platform. Or maybe even usage, because we, because <laughs> on GitHub we always uh, try to enforce usage to the mailing list, but maybe we can uh, take a few here, no? Sure. Okay, any questions? Anything anyone want to speak up?
Okay. If there is no one, then uh, I guess we can move on. We can keep this kind of uh, slot open for, for the next meetings um, and people can insert uh, questions maybe um, ahead of time. Um, and then we have basically already become, come to our last point of the agenda, which is um, since we've been like, this is the very first time that we've done this kind of a meeting, um, it would be great if uh, people can give their input. Um, even before the meeting started, I already added two, two points, uh, which is uh, get the link to the document right on the first time. Um, I, I did get a lot of um, requests to share permissions uh, on the wrong document, which actually didn't exist anymore um, because I moved it to the, uh, to the public space. Um, so yeah, I'll try to make that happen next time. And um, we were discussing earlier on IRC that it would have been helpful if there was a um, global invite uh, that is sent to everyone uh, instead of everyone having to go to the mailing list and accepting it. Um, we did this consciously this time, uh, but we also said that for a one-off meeting where we just want to try this kind of format, uh, we don't necessarily want to invite um, a thousand people um, that are on the mailing list at once. Um, so, yeah, but I think um, unless anyone uh, thinks it's not a good idea, I think for the next time we can, we can do that. Um, I see there was a new, um, a new point. Um, the, the time zone is, is good, you said. Um, it's good for most uh, Prometheus developers, think, developers, I think, because most of us are uh, located in Europe or somewhere close to European central time zones, um, unlike most of Kubernetes, I think. So yeah, I, am, I'm, I chose this time. I, <laughs> I'm happy about it too. Um, any other? <laughs> Once we hit once we hit one thousand participants, we can make it twenty four hours, like a, a big, big, long session. Sure. <laughs> session has a different meaning in Ireland. Okay, okay, okay. Well, in relation, by the way, I just uh, had something else in mind in relation to the to the bug fix uh, moratorium. I'm not sure if. Um, uh, everyone here is aware but we're also getting some i already mentioned it but we're getting some free credit from google and uh, myself and somebody else were working on uh, automated ben uh, benchmarking which should help uh, make it making prometheus even more stable but it's still work in progress it's just i wanted to mention because we're working on other things as well And basically what um, the prom bench will the automating benchmarking will do is just will be able to run automated testings for um, like sensitive PRs like significant code, code changes or uh, before every release which should help uh, catch bugs even before a release or before merging a PR that is breaking Prometheus which the current um, unit testing doesn't really cover because it requires a little bit of a high load or basically deploying Prometheus from like an end-to-end -end testing in an actual working environment. Yeah. Okay, um, I guess um, also one more feedback could be that um, this time we scheduled this meeting for uh, an hour and uh, we're about to, I, I guess we're about to end it. Um, so for next time, probably we can uh, do 30 minutes. Um, yeah. Anything else? I would say let's leave it for an hour and just see how this goes over a few iterations. You know, it's always okay to close the meeting early. Sure, yeah, I'm happy with that as well. I'm sure everyone's happy to end meetings early and keep them productive. Okay then, if there's nothing else, um, I would say um, have a great local time and see you next time.
Bye bye. Bye bye. Are Thanks we going to uh, uh, Frederick? Are you still there? Yes. Are we going to pause the recording somewhere? Yes, that's what I'm doing right now. <laughs>